Hello everyone, uh, yeah, my name is Rob Harding, I'm the Engineering Manager for Talents Traffic Business, uh, based over in Warwick. Uh, I've, I've just got a couple of slides about who Talent are, in case you've not heard of us. We're, we're a half a billion pound company, employing about 3,000 people uh, across the UK in 1,200 engineering roles. Uh, we've got 42 regional sites in the UK, and as I say, our, our HQ is in, in uh, Warwick. But we're, we're much, much wider than just, excuse me, just transport, we're big in emergency services, we do a lot in the network, sort of infrastructure uh, area, uh, utilities, defence and, and higher education. That's just a few of our, our sort of main uh, customers. So, for instance, we've looked after Merseyside's fire and rescue service IT systems for over 20 years. Uh, we've rolled out a full sort of microwave fibre network to the Maritime Coast Guard Agency. We've sort of 165 really um, you know, wild sites in the, in the middle of nowhere, got comms to them. We've done Wi-Fi systems at various universities, uh, as long as, as as well as the all the traffic side of things. We've designed and implemented the new uh, network for Hinkley Point, um, the new um, nuclear power station. So we're, we're a lot wider than just uh, just transport and just traffic. Uh, but in in terms of traffic signal maintenance, so in London we look after about a third of their signals, all of their CCTV. And outside of London, we maintain about 7,000 traffic signal sites for 32 different clients. And you can see on the map there, everything from Cumbria to West Yorkshire, including the likes of Leeds, North Wales, Gloucestershire, Oxfordshire, Wiltshire, and then the South East, Essex, Kent, East Sussex, West Sussex. And it's, it's that sort of area that I'll be talking about in a minute in terms of um, bus priority. So our largest customer has got 775 sites, so junctions and ped crossings, that's in Kent, and we've been the incumbent in Cumbria and West Sussex for, for around 25 years. A uh, little fun fact, we installed 75 miles of traffic signal cable each year, that's the equivalent of Warwick to, to Wembley Stadium. We've got an in-house design services team led by a guy called Phil Scotham, quite a few of these are sort of ex-council guys, uh, and the point of mentioning them is that they can do a, a sort of full turnkey in terms of a bus priority system from the design of the junctions through to the you know implementation of the move and the validation of the mover or scoot if you if you go in that way. So we can design your bus priority schemes if you need help. In terms of products that we use that, that, that allow us to move in this space, we've got our own traffic signal controller. It's based on Swaco Denmark hardware so that the 19 inch rack is provided by them and they're very, very low-level device drivers, but then we throw away all the software, and it's my team that have, have written all of those software modules that sit above, above the hardware, so you know, the, the main traffic signal engine, and then all of the applications like UG405, Mover 8, and Bus Priority. So that's that's on our own controller. If you've not got our, uh, our controller, then we've also implemented all of these things on our own outstation. Uh, so all the Mover 8, Remote Monitoring, UG405, but we've implemented the RT bus priority algorithm or interface on that piece of equipment as well. So that allows you to, to add any of those things to anybody's controller, not just our own. And we've done we've done quite a bit of that around the around the country. So the other key the other key product that's involved in, in this is uh, something called the Optima Orbit's Hour Smart City offering. Um, it started off as just being remote monitoring for traffic signal controllers but then evolved uh, and hence the rebrand to Hub because we've integrated cameras, the bus priority, air pollution, all those kind of uh, extra things. Um, we've got around two and a half, or between two and two and a half thousand sites now across 18 different local authorities spread around the UK, so it puts us in a good position to be able to, to talk to all of those controllers. That's the remote monitoring side of things, so you've got access to the, the remote handset port of the controller, you can see the web page of the controller or any um, attached out station, you can bring up a Google view of the junction and obviously the main purpose of the remote monitoring is about um, uh, fault management, looking at the health of, uh, of those junctions. We did integrate CCTV, this was uh, something we, we developed with West Sussex, they were having problems but they're big. Uh, PTZ cameras, uh, camera people blaming the comms, comms people blaming the camera people. So we, we integrated cost effective, I keep getting told off for saying cheap, cost effective um, IP bullet cameras. Very simple, we're not trying to do AMPR, we're not trying to record anything. We can see you get a really nice sort of situational awareness just by pointing a fixed bullet camera back down the, back down the junction. 
just for just for the guys in the operations centre to nip in, have a look, nip out again. It's not designed to be permanently on in a control room uh, on the wall. You know, we thought at the time we we're going to have to implement uh, DSL lines into all of those sites, but it works really, really well on 4G comms because we dialed the cameras down to 10 frames a second and limited the bandwidth. As I say, nothing's recorded, so we've not got any GDPR issues. I mentioned that we were integrated air quality sensors, so we've done that with a couple of providers, EarthSense and AirScan, uh, to give you real-time and historical data. That's a, an example of the output. And, there, and we've, we've put two corridors in in, in Gloucestershire, one, one in the middle of Gloucester and one in the middle of um, Cheltenham. Um, and we're also, I've not got a slide on it, but we've also implemented a, a trial in West Sussex where we're putting a, a pollution sensor on each arm of a junction, one in the centre, and we're going to see if we can affect pollution by changing traffic signal timings. Um, but at the, at the minute we're at the stage where we're trying to decide what those thresholds are before we turn that on. So moving on to bus priority, so we've implemented the, the Arctic 031 message interface on our traffic signal controller and our outstation. Um, messages are translated into priority calls, whatever that type of priority is, so it could be move rate, it could be the controller's inbuilt bus priority mode, a, a basic hurry call, or anything else that a controller can do. So anything you can do in special conditioning or anything like that. It's my job to tell the, to, to get the message to the controller to say, there's a bus coming, it's turning left, it's 10 minutes late. What you do about that is up to the clever traffic signal engineers to decide. So there's two, two flavours of it. Um, there's a slide on each. So one, the customer does the data broker, brokering using whatever bus position data they have. And then option two is that uh, we provide a direct connection to the bus data provider, so the likes of VIX and Ticketer, and we deal with passing those messages on to the controllers. A bit more detail on that. So option one, this was developed uh, with Joel at Leeds. Uh, they they were originally going through their UTC with a bolt on on top of that spruce, I think it was called, uh, and there were horrendous latency problems in, in doing that. So he asked us if we could we could help. So we implemented the uh, the Arctic 031 interface on the controller and on the on the outstation, and you'll see that the. There's only a subtle difference between the two options. Um, I don't care where Joel gets his data from. It's irrelevant to me. And he knows where all the controllers are. So he knows the IP addresses of all the controllers. He deals with passing the messages on. All I have to worry about is that on an individual controller or an individual outstation, I'm receiving an Arctic 31 message uh, to deal with. And you'll see that the outstation there, if, if it's connected to any other manufacturer's controller and you're using physical I.O. so it's wired into the inputs of a controller um, to, to, to go from the message to something that means something to the, the destination controller. Option two is where we've got the opti Optima hub involved. So, um, we, so it's, it, the, the messages are all Arctic 31 all the way through. So down that left hand side at the minute we've implemented the interface with VIX and Ticketer. Uh, and, and we get messages from them and our, we know where our controllers are from the Optima Hub um, so we, we can pass those messages around um, same, same on the right hand side so I say we've, met, we've implemented that in Leeds uh, the more recent ones we've done we've done a fire junction corridor in West Sussex using option 2 so this is via the Optima Hub and we're currently rolling out 30 sites in East Sussex as part of their BSIP um, program. Um, there's no additional equipment on buses or junctions other than the comms equipment uh, and obviously an outstation if, you've, if you're using a, a third party controller that's not a talent one. It's configured on the web page, I'll show you that in a minute and as I say you can use any controller. So the, the process, which I'm sure you're probably familiar with, the authority defines the virtual loop positions in a spreadsheet or something like that, passes them to the likes of VIX and Ticketer. They upload that information to the to the buses and the uh, and their servers. We get a message to say in real time, uh, there's a bus that's hit this virtual loop. It's uh, it's this late. It's turning left. Pass that to the development controller, and then as I say, the traffic controller can do whatever it likes. In a minute, it's all it's all been mover eight. But as Tim says, mover eight. Certainly in East Sussex, they've had to do quite a bit of junction upgrade upgrades uh, to allow the junction to be mover eight 
can't just implement move rate just for the buses. The, the junction's got to be a move junction to be able to do that. But there's no reason why you can't just do a straight sort of priority call if that if that's um, if that's the way you want to go. So there's the there's the standard Arctic message on the left there. As I say, it's got the idea of the junction, where it's going, uh, the priority, and uh, I think it's north north to 29 minutes late or anything over that is very late. Um, and you'll see that's a, that's a, the web page of our controller and our app station. So it lets you, the good thing about this is you can configure it, you're not pre-configuring it necessarily. You have to pre-configure the bits that you want to control. So you write a series of rules on the web page, uh, saying for instance, uh, if I'm turning left and it's more than 10 minutes late, then set that control bit. Uh, and in this instance, that's going to move right. So BPAA means something to move right, the move right implementation. <coughs> so the good thing about this is you can tweak it you know, on site, uh, depending on how it's working. Um, at the minute, I believe West Sussex have just set that to say uh, any buses, any late, uh, you know, any, any amount of minutes late, um, give it priority. You don't have to do that, obviously. You can just pick late buses if that's what you want to do. In terms of feedback, uh, I'd hope to have something a bit more subjective, but um, objective. But at the minute, it's just word of mouth. It's great. We like to roll it out across Crawley, so we're hoping to get a bit, <laughs> some more data behind that. But um, the feedback from the bus companies is that it's working really, really, really well down there. Certainly enough to carry on rolling it out. And that's it. Fairly short and sweet. Any questions? <coughs>